Bernie Schmeezy, and tonight we're here at the Rainbow Room, site of the 23rd annual Guildhall Lifetime Achievement Awards. We're honored to be joined by Ruth Applehoff, Executive Director of Guildhall, and what an event this is, Ruth, uh, our annual 23rd Annual <laughs> Lifetime Achievement. That's right, and it is a fantastic evening for Guildhall. We're so glad you all are here, and uh, we're welcoming the whole East Hampton community here tonight. For those who are not familiar with Guildhall, our TV station now is seen into Westchester here in New York City. If they don't know of what Guildhall is all about, could you tell us? Oh, sure. Guildhall is an amazing institution. It's um, a theater, a museum, uh, an art center, and uh, I call it a three-ring circus because there's something going on in every one of those areas all the time. It was established in 1930. One. One. Mm -hmm. But tonight we're honoring our Lifetime Achievement Awards, which is now in its 23rd year. Mm -hmm. And you've selected uh, three luminaries right. in the field of the arts, um, artists, and, um, and performance. Well, we're very fortunate tonight, and I should make it clear that I didn't select these folks. We have a group of over 200 people. They're members of the Guildhall Academy of the Arts and they received a ballot this fall and they voted and these are the people that won that ballot. Amazing and we'll, we'll be sharing that with our viewers, these uh, luminaries that are here this evening. There's something big happening at Guildhall and that's the John Drew <laughs> Theater. Could we just yeah. talk a little bit about of that? Of course. The John Drew Theater, well, it's uh, had a fantastic history with some of the most amazing uh -huh. Uh, celebrities in theater uh, for the last 75 years and uh, it needed a little brush up, a little touch up, a little refreshing. So we decided actually to renovate and um, it's now in its first year, we're just finishing up the first year of renovation, planning to open in October actually for Columbus Day weekend. So we're excited about that and we hope you guys will come and um, do some interviews at that time. Well, we love Guild Hall at Hamptons TV and we're so proud of your uh, stewardship of what you're doing, bringing, bringing it forward and uh, oh, it's a resource for the community and uh, those of us who live and work on the East End realize that this is home for uh, the artistic community and, and for the neighborhood. Yeah. Well, I think that's the most amazing thing about Guild Hall. It's our neighbors, and these fabulous people happen to be our neighbors. And not only are they part of the Academy and they're here tonight to receive their Lifetime Achievement Award, but they also come back during the year. They come back and they'll be on our stage, or they'll have an exhibition in the museum, or they'll help uh, teach kids in our community. So. It's really, a, it, it's thoroughly rooted in the community, but it also is international. Thank you for inviting us to this great party. You're very welcome. I hope you have fun. Christina and Paul Strassfield, and you have a very important role there at Guildhall, don't you? Yes, I'm the curator of the art museum. Isn't that amazing? That art museum has such great items and it's an important part of what Guildhall is all about. Absolutely. Since the beginning of Guildhall, since 1935, the museum has always existed and we've shown artists from the area and we have a wonderful collection of almost 2,000 pieces of art. For those who are not familiar with Guildhall, Paul, you're, you're married to Guildhall. Yes, I am. <laughs> For a long time. Just describe Guildhall. What does it mean to you? It's a community art museum and a theater. And it's orig it was originally planned to be there for the community, but because of the way the community has grown, Guildhall has also grown. And it's fun. It's an interesting place. It's good for the people who live there all year round. My children, our children go all the time, but it's also important for uh, all the people who visit. Since 1931, but speaking of fun, are you excited? We've got some great honorees tonight. Absolutely. David Sally is the person who's won the literary arts, and I did a show of his work about 10 years ago, and it's really wonderful because he really deserves that great honor. So I'm really excited about it for David, for Mel Brooks, for um, Sillerman, and for one more? Joe, Joe Pintaro. Yes, absolutely. All wonderful artists in their own right. 
Well, we thank you so much. You're there every day, and uh, if not for support, like guys like Paul behind you. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so well, much. All the best to Christina Paulson. to be uh, joined by Mr. David Sally, who is a recipient tonight of one of our uh, Lifetime Achievement Awards. Congratulations, sir, on an honor for the visual arts, and uh, you are uh, an accomplished gentleman in the visual arts. Thank you. You know, I was reading your history, and I, I believe you were born in Oklahoma, then That's lived true. in Kansas. That's true. And then went to Cal, uh, to, to Cal study arts, yeah. in uh, California, and then, interesting part, came to, to New York, mm -hmm and was working in a variety of uh, functions, uh, one of which was uh, being a waiter, working in the, in the arts, all sorts of things. But the interesting thing was you worked for a magazine. That's true. It's a big part of my visual training was working in graphic design. And when the magazine folded, you took all of your... and that was basically the start of your own artistic career. Well, that's a shorthand way of putting it, but that, uh, that has some element of truth to it. And from there, success came to you with different shows. Uh, Ross Blechner is a friend, I guess. That very, very close friend. And he was one who brought you forward. Tonight, Guildhall, what does Guildhall mean to you? Guildhall is a place that I have gone to uh, over the years many, many times to, for example, to see a screening of a movie that might not have a commercial release, to hear a friend read from a new volume of poetry or short stories. In other words, a place that is not uh, beholden to just to commercial theatrical interests. And as such, it, it expresses the, um, the, uh, the, you know, the, the sense of what's important to the community of artists in the Hamptons. One of uh, our participants here said, you're too young to receive this award. Hello. And that only indicates that there's more great work to come Congratulations, sir, on this big evening. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. My, my uh, association is basically through the John Drew. It's a marvelous theater and a great history and we're very excited about the renovation and I uh, want to be part of the first project that goes into it. I hope I am. What a great event tonight, our honorees. Yeah, yeah. Mel Brooks is here. Mel Brooks is wonderful and also Joe Pintoro who's oh. a very close friend and uh, um, and David Sale, who's being honored for his uh, artistic work. Yes, and, our, and uh, Joe uh, Pintaro's friend and mine, Roy Scheider, is going to be remembered tonight, too. And Absolutely. so we're very happy to be here honoring him. Well, thank you for all you do for Guildhall and all you do for the Hamptons. We're oh, thank uh, you. so proud that you're with us tonight. The Hamptons do a lot for me. <laughs> <laughs> we're honored to be joined by one of our dignitaries tonight, Mr. Joseph Pintaro. Joseph, congratulations. You're one of the recipients of our literary award here at Guildhall, and uh, it's an honor to meet you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Joe, your writing, you live in, on the East End, you live in Sag Harbor, right. and your writing is amazing in, in that it captures, I'm thinking of Men's Lives, uh, Raft of the Medusa, um, and uh, um, the whole host of works that you've created, and uh, your inspiration, where does it come from? Well, I actually, a lot of it does actually come from uh, the East End. Uh, you know, both my novels uh, take place out there, and uh, I, you know, I've been going there since uh, I'm, I'm a kid. Uh, my brother and I bought a house for nine thousand dollars in uh, North Haven. We had a seventeen and a half foot lapstrake cruiser's boat. We used to go out on the weekends to water ski and. Uh, so it's always been there in my life, you know. It's uh, 
especially in the early days when it was uh, more or less a darker place, more beautiful. It had deeper, deeper resonances, you know, the Baymen, uh, the, the Montaukett Indians. Uh, I really feel as though somehow uh, I felt a uh, touch base with uh, that early time. A lot of it hadn't been rubbed out by the time I got there, and so I sort of cling to that idea of the place, and it helps me, it helps me continue to love it and appreciate it in spite of the changes. Well, we know artists that are attracted to the East End because of the visual arts and the, the beauty, but if uh, the inspiration of the East End uh, has been great for you as a writer, that, that's all the more reason why we've got such important people living uh, in Sag Harbor. Well, yeah, I mean, I love Sag Harbor. It's, it's really, it's, it's the real thing, you know what I mean? It hasn't lost its um, beautiful colloquial sort of flavor. Uh, it's the kind of people, I live in a house that I bought oh, about 40 years ago. That's uh, 1876. Uh, I was the second person to own it. And so the attic was just full of history of this one family, the Bassendons, and so I've taken very good care of it. I, I, it needs renovation soon, and I hate to do that to it, do you know what I mean? Because it's still a proud old Victorian house, but, uh, but I, you know, I think everything has meaning. Buildings, uh, woods, uh, I mean, you know, one just has to think of, uh, of Robert Frost and that short poem about stopping by the woods on a snowy evening and it's so full of, of meaning, you know, the beauty, the darkness um, and, and a lot of that is still there. I, I love the fact that I remember what it was like and I can't stop at certain places and, and just uh, see the ongoing memory of them, you know, the, the woods behind the house, so to speak. Uh, I remember the place. And it still is extremely beautiful. I mean, you can't, you can't uh, kill the beauty of a place that's caught between the ocean and the bay. And uh, so it's great. Uh, well, we're so thrilled that you're, you're being honored tonight. I have so many questions to ask you. I, I, there are a number of your works. In fact, I'm going to just we're going to have a full half hour with uh, with Joe on BBH, if uh, with your kind permission. But there's a a play that was uh, staged at Guild Hall called "Besides Herself." Beside herself, yeah. And yeah. it's the story, if I, I may. I mean, just the words. I, I want to convey what you write, and in in your own words, it's a story of Mary Candy, who's the main character, and she's deeply hurt by her first love that she does something that destroys her life. She lives alone on an island off the coast of New England in a house surrounded by fog that is so close to the highway she can hear the cry of animals as they are hit by passing cars. The saving and hailing of these animals has become her life and then she falls in love with the UPS man. <laughs> right. Well, I, this, is, this is magnificent. Then you write, this, these are your own words. The question is one of responsibility. Can I fight these urges to destroy and instead create a safe place for love to grow? The characters have to cross a barrier of time and loss and the selves have to find a new destiny. And the destiny is to get to the path to rejuvenation. Thank wow. you for those beautiful words. I, I don't even remember saying them, but uh, I'm glad I did because, I, you know, they, they sound pretty good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I loved, I lived in a house uh, for a long time with a friend when my house was rented. It was on 114 and it was opposite of Pete Bog, which sadly right now, believe it or not, was filled in and a house is there. But there were animals constantly crossing the road out of the peat bog. Raccoons and uh, all sorts of animals, snakes, that uh, frogs that would come out somehow or another, sometimes in uh, kind of, you know, mating uh, paths that they took, turtles. And uh, we were always going out there shoveling up 
<laughs> and you know, in fact, many times we comforted dogs that were hit by cars because the the land was low, so there were these um, fogs, these sort of like a snake of fog that you would hit on 114 and come out of it right away. But the house was right there. And Mildred Candy was my friend Greg's grandmother. That's her name. Uh, and I, So it's based on a real person. It's based on a real person. She used to bake pies and she was there, but uh, but I mean, from and then the whole thing became, you know, fantastical. Uh, uh, John Lee Beatty at Circle Rep did a set in which the trees were actually growing inside the house, well, and it was like this woman's mind that was, you know, kind of partly in the past and partly in the present, and invaded by nature, and she became the uh, the comforter of these animals. But she had a dark secret. Yeah. And uh, but Joe, you know, your inspiration. Uh, we're we're so thrilled that you're here, and we're so you well deserving of this award. And uh, we thank you. Keep it coming. Ah, oh, thanks. I sure will. I'm working. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Have you seen it yet? Uh, young for absolutely, when absolutely. Did you see it? I saw it uh, three weeks ago. Really? We're talking about Young Frankenstein, and I'm with the one of our honorees tonight, Mr. Mel Brooks. Uh, Mel, I got to say something before we begin here. Yes. Did you like Young Frankenstein? I think Young Frankenstein is going to be the next Producer. producers. Right. Okay. <laughs> But well, you're getting ahead of yourself. I want to talk about Abraham Kaminsky, who was your grandfather. Yes. Now, he was in the herring business. He was. And I'm thankful for all of our fans out there that yeah. you did not go into the family right, business. Right, right. I think, I think in 1929 there, there was a stock market crash, and my, my grandfather was in herring futures. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and it all went under. So thank God, I you know I made my way to show business. Now the other thing I heard about you were bullied when you were a kid. You know, sure. those were tough times. All, all little t short shoes are always bullied. You know, well, yeah. that's the way it hangs. Yeah, 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 yeah. so, <laughs> I hope that's changed now. Yeah. You know, but but having said that, you went and worked in the Catskills as a tumbler. Yes. Now it's the correct way of saying it is yeah, tumbler. Exactly. Now you took something bad and you turned it into something good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would, you know, you had to be fast, <laughs> and when people were chasing you, and and you have to be fast with, with uh, all those bad jokes. You tell a bad joke in the mountains, they'll throw a herring at you. You know, <laughs> you're in trouble. You'll you'll be in trouble. But, but Mel, but then... it was wonderful working in the Catskills, because it was, uh, you know, that's why I'm doing this for Guildhall. There are no, there are no places for people to spread their wings, to try their material, to, you know, there's only like one or two venues in, in, in Long Island and in, in the Hamptons, there's Sag Harbor, the Bay Theater, yes. and we've got, you know, our guild, Guild Hall in East Hampton. So it's, you know, in the, in the mountains, in the Borscht Belt, we had 131 places where you could die, you know, where, <laughs> where your stuff didn't work. But here, you know, so, but it's very important that, that venues like comedy clubs and like theaters, especially regional theaters, stay alive and give young people a chance to, to find out whether they, they want to be in show business or show business wants them, you know. What you're saying is so important. Where does someone get their start? It's it, it not, you know, I don't know anymore. That's why I'm supporting Guild Hall because I've seen plays and I've seen stand-up comics there and I've seen some wonderful stuff that could never be seen anywhere if unless there was a venue for it. Exactly. We need exactly. A, you need a proscenium arch. You and know? we know the producers is the outstanding success that it is. Incidentally, uh, our viewers should know that you're one of the rare people who is a recipient of an Oscar, an Emmy, a Grammy. And what am I missing? There's something out there. A Tony. Here. A Tony. Yes. A Tony for the for yeah. for all of the above. Fantastic. Now the producers um, now young Frankenstein, Frankenstein or it's Frankenstein. Frank Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Frank 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 Frankenstein. Okay, get it right. Yeah. Fantastic. Is Blazing Saddles in the offing? 
I don't know. If I run out of ideas, of course, but I think I'll come up with something before that. Well, Mel, we're yeah. so honored that yeah. you're here tonight. Thank you for supporting Hall, and thank you for such a life. Of oh, well, I, you know, for everybody living in the Hamptons, we're blessed. And everybody living there should go to Guildhall and enjoy what's happening there, and let's all hang out together. We're having a good time here at Guildhall. My cousin, Cousin Brucey. Wow, what a place. First of all, I got Guildhall. I'm, I'm reliving my youth. I said youth, right? Yeah. Up here in the rainbow and the clouds up here in Rockefeller Center. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, opportunity for people to get together for something that's really important to me, too. You know, taking care of the arts. And you guys do a heck of a good job with it. Oh, thank you so much. We're here for Guildhall. But you're also here because a very good friend of yours... Mr. Robert FX, FX Silliman. Silliman. Don't ask me what the FX stands for. I have is no being idea. honored tonight for yes. his his leadership, for his philanthropic work, and you guys go way back. And uh, it must be you must be proud. Well, I am. I'm very proud of Bob. Bob is a one of a kind. He is a piece of work. Let me tell you, there's nobody like Bob Silliman, and I'm here also to honor Mel, who's a good friend oh, of mine. Absolutely. But Bob and I have been partners in radio and television stations for many, many years, and uh, we're still very involved in business. And uh, when I see him accept an award, which, by the way, is very rare for him, so this must be very, very important to Bob Silliman. Uh, he only does things when he wants to do things. Hey, Cousin Brucey, we love you, and we know that you're now on Sirius Sirius Radio. Out of radio. And what did I hear? There's a, some TV work you're doing? Well, I'm doing a lot of TV for PBS television. Absolutely. PBS, I do all the rock and roll shows, and yes. I try to raise money for public broadcasting. I believe in it. Well, we want to see Cousin Brucey. We want to hear Cousin Brucey. You're the legend in this business, but this legend is uh, a legend in, in, in not only in radio, but in business. Thank you. you know, we're so proud of you. You really pulled it all, all right. together. I got a question now. Yes, sir. How's the meatloaf? Uh, <laughs> An honoree tonight is this gentleman, Mr. Robert F.X. Silliman, and we're so thrilled that you're here and all that you do for the Hamptons. When um, I always remember those uh, those events by the beach, those all great concerts. All for the sea. <laughs> all for the sea. I know you're a humble guy and you don't like to get uh, outed in, uh, in front of the camera, but what a what a history it's been for you and what. You're a man who's created, in terms of, of, your award is twofold. One is business, leadership, and of course, your philanthropic work. And in the world of business, uh, you revolutionized radio, concerts, and now you're redefining uh, uh, the business with respect to, uh, to um, idols. And this has been some history for you. I know, you know, I sometimes pinch myself and wonder how it all got started. But the thing I don't understand is, why are they giving such a young guy like me a Lifetime Achievement Award? I'm just getting started. Well, that's what I heard. Someone had said, you're too young to receive this award. Don't but you think so? I think, it's a, I think it's a mistake. I think that maybe we'll give it to Cousin Brucey. He deserves it better, <laughs> don't you think? I think everyone wants to encourage the great life that you've lived and for more. And we're so thrilled that you're here and part of this event. And, and for, for our viewers, they should know that... You are involved in charitable activities, and your philanthropic work is very important yes. to this award and is, is as equal as your success in business. Well, that frankly is why I was quote-unquote willing to accept it, because I think the rewards of business are self-explanatory, and we don't need honors for that. Um, we do that, and that's what we get paid for. But being recognized for philanthropic endeavors that my wife Laura and I have been fortunate enough to be able to participate in. That's something special. That means a lot to me. Well, this is your evening. We wish you continued great success. I want to talk about your father and Lassie and the beginnings and your, your oh, my beginnings. Goodness. You've done your homework. <laughs> but it's, uh, this is too brief, and this time is to be enjoyed by you and your guests, and we thank you so much. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk. Be well. well. We're here at this great gala, and I'm joined by Cindy Cook, editor-in-chief of Hamptons Magazine. And who doesn't know of Hamptons Magazine and 
the greatness that is Hamptons Magazine. A lot of imitators. In the <laughs> oh, there are, yeah, more and more every year. I mean, we have, I think, six magazines out on the East End now, but we like to think we're the best. <laughs> oh, Hamptons Magazine is the best. And we're, we're, here we are. The season is about to begin, mm -hmm, at least sure the spring is. season as we move forward. What's your sense of what sort of a year, uh, what sort of a summer and spring it's going to be in, uh, in the Hamptons? Well, this year is our 30th year in business, actually. So it's huge for us, really, really big. And we plan a lot of really great events around our 30th anniversary. We'll have a great kickoff spring event in the city, and then we'll have a nice big Memorial Day event like we do every year. And then we hope to pepper the summer with a couple more great events and usually you know, have our great roster of stars, as we always do. So it's, it's going to be another summer of a lot of fun, and it is right around the corner. Well, absolutely. Well, if uh, Hamptons Magazine is the Bible of the Hamptons, anyone who wants to know what's happening in the Hamptons, and tonight it's Guildhall's night, and mm. isn't that something? It is. I mean, Guildhall is such a great cultural institution in our midst. They do such great theater, and they support the film festival in the fall, and they have movies, and, and of course the galleries, and now they're expanding, so they'll be only that much better. I, th I think it's a wonderful, wonderful place. Great to see you. It must be an important event because Cindy is here representing <laughs> Hamptons Magazine. Continued success. How many years? This is my uh, third year. This will be my third year at Hamptons. Third year. And Hamptons yes. Magazine is 30? 30. 30. Our 30? magazine is 30, yes. Well, we have to have a special celebration for Hamptons Magazine. And yeah. I'm pretty sure you're going to have it, and we'll cover it on, Great. on Hamptons TV. Great. All Thank the best you. to you, Cindy. Thanks so much. Thank you. Our viewers know this gentleman, Mr. Alan Petrikoff. But mostly in your uh, great uh, vintage cars that you own no, at the... <laughs> no cars. <laughs> Bridgehampton Road Rally. But this is some classy event, isn't it? In honor of Guildhall. Well, every year they have it. And the turnout seems to get bigger and bigger. It I, sure does. We've been here, I think, more times than I want to count. Alan, the uh, Hamptons community is very important to you. You're a man who you know, works internationally, have had great success. But being home in the Hamptons and Guildhall, what does that mean to you? Well, I don't know. I, I, you're right. It does. It is my home. Uh, I consider it my home, and I think that if you ask me to choose between New York and and East Hampton, I'd say New York is not my real home. Is East Hampton? Uh, I feel it's the community, and you're part of it. And my kids are brought up there, and as I've said many times, someday. When we are not here anymore, my wife and I, I think my kids won't care very much about our apartment in New York, but they'll care a lot about their home out in East Hampton. Well, Alan, thank you for all the great work you do. Uh, those of us in the Hamptons follow all of the events that you're, uh, you contribute to, that you're supportive of, and uh, we need people, more people like you out on the East End. And thanks for being here, standing for Guild Hall and being part of this event. Well, I think it's very important that we support it. Uh, East Hampton is a community, and it depends on the people who live there, whether they're full-time or, or part-timers like us, to really come out and support the events and the uh, uh, institutions, the organizations out there. Thank you. Michael Braverman, how handsome you look. Well, thank you. Um, you know, years ago, everyone you wore a black tie here has been breaking down since, and um, I guess I'm the last of the holdouts. Well, as everyone knows, Michael keeps the standards of the Hamptons high. Looking forward to a big season in the Hamptons. Well, we all are. You're all over. You're here, you're there. Well, thank you, VVH, which you know very well because you've held this microphone on a number of occasions, and we're so proud of your participation and what you mean to our station, but also to the Hamptons community. Well, holding this mic used to be some of my happiest times. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Guildhall, a little bit about Guildhall. It's important to you, isn't it? Um, I mean, Guildhall is um, essential to the cultural life of the East End. Um, you know, they, they've done so much, as you know, um, you know, there's an extraordinary collection of art. Right now they're redoing the John Drew Theater. It's, um, you know, without Guildhall and, and the parish, we'd be uh, a community bereft of this kind of... Michael, in addition to all of your philanthropic work in the Hamptons, you're a great writer. Uh, you read Michael in the uh, East Hampton Star. 
Hamptons Magazine, your wine columns. Uh, do we have uh, Long Island wines here tonight? <laughs> well, um, uh, I'm going to find out. Actually, I asked for champagne and they gave me Prosecco. So, so far, we have to keep an eye on them. <laughs> it's such a pleasure seeing you. Thank you, Michael. joined by Deborah Halpert of Hamptons Magazine, and this is a stellar event, isn't it? I think it's an amazing event. What a lovely evening here at the Rainbow Room. Hamptons Magazine is part of this event, and Guildhall, tell us a little bit of what that means to you, Guildhall. I think Guildhall means the finest in entertainment in East Hampton. It means history, means excitement, and, and, and tonight it means a celebration. Wherever you are, Deborah, it's a celebration, and Hamptons Magazine is there, and we're happy that you're part of this event. It's going to be a big summer, isn't it? It's going to be a spectacular summer. Well, we're looking forward to reading Hamptons Magazine and all the great work that you and your staff do. Thank you. You won't be disappointed. We're celebrating a 30th anniversary this year. Great things to come. Thank you. to be joined by Judy Lick. Judy, this is some event, isn't it? It's terrific. I mean, it, to me, it's it's kind of bringing a little bit of East Hampton here to New York City, and it's nice to see a lot of old friends and get together with them off-season a little bit, but it's, it's always on-season. I've just come back, actually, yesterday, but it's nice to be here all glitzed up and oh, yeah. seeing some fun people. You usually, uh, in your career, you've covered all the glitzy, but Guildhall is... Is glitzy, but it's it's home, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, what's extraordinary about living in a place like East Hampton or any of the Hamptons, for that matter, is that it is just wonderful to be able to have the beach and the country, and yet also to have the most extraordinary offerings of, you know, theater and art and and poetry and film. I mean. It's the best of both worlds, and we're so lucky, really, to have that, that combination of, of country and art, of intellect and simplicity. You can't ask for anything. You say it so well, but we'll add fashion to that, because that's something that you're... <laughs> You're the pro in the room on that. If I never see another dress, <laughs> I'm just back from Milan and New York Fashion Week. If I never see it, you notice I'm just wearing a suit. <laughs> I can't look at another piece of fashion. <laughs> well, well, beautiful as ever. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to you. I'm so glad not to be holding the microphone myself for change. A number of institutions in the Hamptons, and this gentleman is, uh, Guildhall is one of them, <laughs> dating back to 1931, but Dan's Papers is definitely up there. You're looking terrific. Dan. Thank you very much. Uh, dating back to 1960. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I have a memoir coming out in May. Please, let's uh, talk about that. Yes, we will. It's um, There's pieces about it in uh, Guild Hall. There's, in it is um, George Plimpton, Billy Joel, all kinds of people. It'll when be, you think of Guild Hall, what recollections come to mind? My, my favorite really great memory there was the crew from a chorus line. Going to Guild Hall is like going home for you, isn't it? Oh yeah, well this is the, the major cultural piece in the Hamptons. And uh, oddly enough, in many ways, this is the most exciting event in the Hamptons, and it's not in the Hamptons. And that's it's not true. in the Hamptons, that's true. Yeah. We're here at uh, the Rainbow Room in Rockefeller Center, and a number of honorees, and I know in, uh, in, in the not too distant future, uh, this gentleman will be one of them also, because you give a lot to the Hamptons. Well, that's very kind of you to say something like that. There's, I wouldn't believe that at all, but we'll see. Well, I'd like to make a bet with you on okay. that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Rebecca Cooper, so great to see you. Guildhall is very important to you, isn't it? It's the happiest day of my life. I like nothing more than success for Guildhall. It's the most fabulous art institution of all the Hamptons. And it's because of support of people like you. Everyone knows Rebecca Cooper, the gallery, Sag Harbor. Thank you for all the support you give the community. We would be nothing without Guildhall. This is some glitzy event, isn't it? Fabulous. Well, it's glitzier because Rebecca Cooper is here. Continued success. We'll be catching up with you throughout the summer. Everyone knows we cover all the openings at Guildhall. And thank you for being part of this uh, great event.